Good morning, happy Friday, and I hope everyone had a wonderful 4th of July. I know I certainly did, but before I get into talking about everything, I need to get to my little behind my act of kindness. So, um, let's see. You know what my love is? The fact that yesterday was such a great day, I don't, I just wish it didn't end. I mean, listen. Yeah, people are doing fireworks all throughout the night. In fact, it was like 1 a.m. and they were still going off. But you know what? It's 4th of July. Well, it was 4th of July. By 1 a.m. it was technically 5th of July. Point is, a lot of people celebrate America's birthday however they want. It's one day a year. It's not going to kill anybody. I mean... Yeah, I don't get me wrong. I understand that you know dogs and cats don't like the fireworks and stuff like that. I get that. I respect that. But it's one night, not the end of the world. It's okay. My high is crashing everything else that happened that whole day. I mean, good lord, we had um, there was a there was a kid there. It was a hot day out, but it was beautiful. There was a kids parade at the on the road at where my cottage is up at Cuckoo Lake. My family came up. I got to see and play with my nephews. My nephews got to march in that parade. Actually, um, there were like snow cones at the end of that parade too. That was really cool. Um, my brother, my sister in law, and her parents came up. It was just a great family day. And we had burgers and dogs for dinner. Corn on the cob, a little bit of the happy hour. I tried vegan cheese for the first time. I'm back. This is just such a good day. Seriously, I was so incredibly busy yesterday, like having fun. Because here's the thing normally on Thursdays, whenever there's a new episode of Hot Ones, like pretty much at 11 o'clock when the episode premieres on YouTube. I'm immediately like watching the episode. It was two o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, you know what? Let's get, let's do this. <laughs> it probably came across as I'm like, you know what? Let's just get this over with. But no, I really did want to do this. And it was a great episode too. By the way, my act of kindness was, um, well, helping my family watch my nephews. Helping things get ready for dinner, help preparing for company to arrive. It was a lot to do. It was really fun. Frankly, yesterday was, you know what, this was probably the best 4th of July I've had in quite a while. My one sad regret is it took Seriously, this was the best 4th of July I had since July 4th, 2019, which was five years ago. Well, five years and one day ago right now. But that's just how good of a day it was. I mean, listen, I went, I talked enough about day 550 yesterday and how that was one of the best videos I ever done. And I still stand by it. But... I kind of didn't think it would go up from there, and it went up, and up, and up, yesterday, that is. I mean, if anyone was looking for, like, seriously, if I really wanted, like, a great start to the second half of 2024, this was it. And because it's summer, that means it can only potentially get better from here. Although, speaking of great things that can get better from here, let's talk about yesterday's episode of Hot Ones. Listen, I said this enough on Tuesday. It's Serena Williams. Many people, including myself, can make the case that she is the greatest athlete of all time. Not like tennis athlete, just athlete of all time. The amount of accolades she's won in... Seriously, she could have been, like, the greatest of all time in, like, the 2000s. Just what she did, in though, from, like, 2001, from, like, 1999 to, like, 2010, she'd be, like, considered one of the greatest of all time just, like, during that decade alone. 
But no, she did so, oh, so, oh, so much more than that. And the one thing that definitely, because here's the thing, and I'll get to this when she got the, I mean, she went through, she went through the gauntlet when we were taking on these wings of death. But there is one thing that I learned specifically about Serena Williams is she doesn't do, she never did her, what she did for the fame. She did it because she wanted to win. And it started quite faintly when Sean Evans asked her, you know, why playing against Julie Hallard in 1999 was such a profound career. It was, it was such a profound um, moment in her career. And it was like the but it like there's a load of first that she got, but also like that was the moment where on the whole winning is like the only thing I want to do. Like we hear the phrase all the time, like if you put your mind to something, you can do it. That's why Serena Williams is so great because. Quite, she quite literally put her mind to everything she did in terms of being as great of a tennis player as she was. She's retired now, so I'm, in that case, I'm allowed to use present tense. Normally, you're not, normally, you have to use present tense as long as the person is alive, but I'm referring to her career, which is over, so I can use past tense in that, in that state. Um, they talked about why, like, tennis players, like, grunt whenever they like hit the ball and you know my mom and both my aunts love tennis so I can definitely hear the whole tennis player grunt thing so when Serena was asked about that yesterday she just is like she mentioned that someone was what she was watching someone do that and then she wanted to do it like her but ultimately it it just feels natural to do like, it's as natural as breathing. Like, that's just how natural it is. Um, she talked about the most intense match she ever had against her own sister Venus was the Australian Open 2003. It gave her this Serena Slam. She did, like, her first, like, it was her first Grand Slam, I think. And, like, beating her sister was when, um, you know, in the Australian Open 2003, that's when, that's when she did it. And that was her most intense match. Because Venus was actually playing really well, well, but at one point during the match, and this is, this is what Serena said, like, Venus missed a shot that she easily could have gotten. And she's like, really? That's actually a point I'll get to in a minute. Um, actually, I'll get to it right now. And that is, how to tell when an opponent is losing their concentration. And that's the thing. That's what happened to Venus. She was losing concentration. Serena said it was easier to see on film than it is a real, because like in the moment, you're not really gonna notice it, but in film, you can actually see better, like, okay, like the normal patterns I see you're doing, you're not quite, like, that you were doing the beginning of the match and you're doing so well, you're kind of fading away a little bit. Interesting. Um, let's see. She talked, they actually brought back Explain That Graham. They brought back, well, they didn't actually say it was Explain That Graham, but come on, it was Explain That Graham. Where they talked about, um, uh, Serena's motto, if you look good, you play good. So they talked about the Virgil tutu she wore, the cat suit, the jean skirt, all of Serena's like best outfits ever. And they talked about like each and every single one of those. That was awesome. Um, she talked about how much the post game interview sucks. Which you know what? Shout out to any and all professional athletes that have to go through like having a post game interview, whether they win or lose. Because I can tell you right now, if I was a professional athlete and I was done playing whatever sport I was playing, win or lose, I wouldn't talk to anyone. Well, I wouldn't want to talk to anyone. You know what? 
I would probably literally be like Marshawn Lynch. I'm only here so I don't get fined. That would literally be me. Speaking of which, Marshawn Lynch should be up for is eligible to get in the Hall of Fame right now. I hope he does someday. Um, this isn't about Marshawn, it's about Serena Williams. Um, let's see. She talked about how um, she unsuccessfully cashed a million dollar check. Again, Serena didn't really care about the money. She played to win. Like, I need to really emphasize. Like, most athletes, like, when they're as good as they are, there's usually, like, a motivating factor. Usually, like, in financial straits, you want to get your family out of, you know, poverty, what have you. And once they get that money, I mean, they're still, for all intents and purposes, good. But you can tell, like, some of that drive is missing as soon as they get, like, that big check. That never happened with Serena Williams. She never lost the drive. I mean, she won, like, I think the last Grand Slam she ever won, she did it while she was, like, four months pregnant or something. And then, like, even after the fact, she went right back to work. Again. This is Serena freaking Williams. She's awesome. Um, yeah, she probably get into this. Uh, well, she got to the bomb. Like that entire thing regarding the bomb was just her reaction to the bomb. Like, just the entire thing was like her reaction to the bomb. That was it. There was no question that was asked. Um, they talked about what makes for. The perfect karaoke night, which involved a story in, in, including uh, her, Lewis Hamilton, who again was actually just on Hot Ones recently, Gigi, I think Venus might have been there. I forget if she said Venus was there. But just choosing her own songs and having fun and yeah, just that. And considering that the whole motif of this whole episode is Serena Williams and her drive to to want to win. Sean actually asked her, what's worse? Losing or dealing with... Is losing... Basically, losing or the bomb beyond insanity? No question, losing is worse for her. I mean, listen... She got through the wings of death because she wanted to get through the wings of death. She wanted to win. She wasn't going to let any hot sauce on that table, whether it was the bomb or peppers up or even the last dab, deter her from winning. That's it. Like, listen, I know at this point I'm beating a dead horse, but... I can make a case Serena Williams is the greatest athlete of all time. This is why. So, um, there's no way in hell Serena Williams is ever going to watch this. So, on the odd chance she does, let me just say, Serena, you know, the impact you've left on just athleticism in general will be remembered forever. Like, your impact on women's tennis, tennis as a whole, everything. Like, what you had done, there isn't a soul alive who's ever going to take that away from you. Certainly not me. So, much love and respect for you. I mean, I mean, what do you want me to say, like, well, Regarding, like, the, uh, the look good, feel good thing, I could easily just say slay queen. But, you know, no. I mean, well, technically, yes, yeah, Serena Williams is a queen. We all know this. But, like, just everything you've done, thank you. And whatever endeavors come your way next, whether it involves raising your family or whatever it is you decide to do, you know... I only hope that 
they're met with much success and satisfaction. I mean, listen, it's going to be hard to, it's hard to compete with everything you've done and how anything could ever be better, but you never know. If I were her, I would keep an open mind to that sort of thing. Trust me, I, well, listen, we're coming up on a, we're coming up on almost a year since I was at my lowest point, which actually reminds me. Start on July 1st, well, technically yesterday I started typing it, but on July 1st, there's actually been a project I've been working on. A very, very big, important project to me. One that throughout the course of it is definitely going to bring up a lot of emotion. Hopefully by the time July is over, actually it should be done by the time July, but by the end of this month, I truly think it'll all be worth it. So I hope you all like this video. If you did like and subscribe to YouTube channel, find me on social media. As always, I'm very humble. this video for all you guys who watched the show. Hopefully, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Friday. And remember, if you guys want to talk to channel, we'll be here to let me know. I'll be back. Take care. Make good choices. Six or seven all day, baby.